upyourmath.com. In today's video, we're going to be doing system of equations. And to solve the system of equations, what we want to do is use the cancellation method. Uh, most of the times, you can use the substitution method, but in this video, we're going to deal strictly with the addition method, which is also known as the cancellation or the elimination method. Now, to do the cancellation or elimination method, the idea is that we're allowed to augment both of these lines of equations and these are standard forms of equations and to solve the solution point if one exists what we want to do is augment it by multiplying either equation line by a number that makes the variable terms opposite but equal right so they'll be opposites of each other in uh, the values that they have so if let's say the multiples of 3 and 2 the LCM is 6 if one value is 6 the other value is negative 6 they will cancel out the LCM of 4 and 5 is 20 and so if I have one at positive 20, the other at negative 20, when I add the two lines, they cancel each other out. And that's the whole idea for it. But for this problem particularly, what I want to do is I want to solve each solution independent of the other. So I have no errors in my solutions. And the reason for that is sometimes you can make a mistake while canceling out a variable and we're solving for y. We can make a little error and our solution will determine the correction of the other solution. And sometimes it's better to be correct than incorrect and so you have to solve both independently and I'm gonna show you guys how to do that now so to do this what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by saying we're solving for the X so to solve for X we have to cancel the Y so here I'm gonna put my two equa equations 3 X's plus 4 Y's equal 13 and I also have 2 X's plus 5 Y's equal 4 and to solve for X I need to cancel the Y and to cancel y, I have to make these values opposite but equal in, scale, in the scale of the value, right? And so, since the 13 is larger up here, I'm going to multiply by a positive up top, and I'm going to multiply by a negative on the bottom, so my solution remains to be a positive. So the, the value, the LCM of 4 and 5, is 20, right? And that's because the first number they both make is 20. So my goal is to make these numbers both 20 and 120, one negative 20, right? And the negative one I'm going to make down here. So I know I have to multiply this line by 4, this line by 5, and I'm going to use negative 4 down here. So my end result of this gives me the negative 20 down here. So let's distribute this and multiply everything out and rewrite them right down here. So we have positive 15x's when I do 5 by 3x's. 5 by 4 y's gives me 20 y's. And 5 by 13, a good way to do this is 5 by 3 is 15. 5 by 10 is 50. 50 plus 15 is 65. Now for the bottom here, we have negative 4 times 2 x's is negative 8 x's. Negative 4 by 5 y's is negative 20 y's. And negative 4 by, negative 4, by 4 is negative 16. And so now, I could use the cancellation method on these equations to solve them. 15 minus 8, 15 x's minus 8 x's is going to be 7 x's. 20 y's minus 20 y's cancel each other out perfectly. And 65, take away 16, we take away 10 from 65, that gives us 55 minus 6, that's 49. And if we look here, we have a perfect solution for the x. 79, 7 x's equals 49, and when we divide both sides by 7, we get x equals 7. Now here's our first solution point for this problem. Now to get our second solution point for this problem, instead of taking this value and substituting it into one of the original equations, which is an advanced form of doing this, what we're going to do to get good practice, if you're practicing for a test or if you're practicing to learn this, is we're going to start all the way over to the original equations and we're going to solve for the y value by canceling our x's using the same LCM trick. Instead of the 5 and the 4, the 2 and the 3 will be at play. And so this shouldn't be too difficult. Doing this gives you twice the practice and helps you get twice the resolve out of your work, right? Makes you twice as better if you can solve something with versatility, right? So here we're going to start over. We're going to take the original equations of 3x plus 4y's is 13. We're also going to take 2x's plus 5y's are equivalent to 4. And this time, what I want to do is cancel out these x's. And again, I want to make the second line my negative because I know that when I multiply these values, 
I want to make this value a lot smaller than this so I could deal with positive solutions. It's a lot easier to deal with positive solutions. Doesn't necessarily mean your outcome is going to be positive, but in the, in the good hope of faith for what we have here, let's, let's see what we get. So to make the LCM, the LCM in this case of 2 and 3 is going to be 6. It's the first number they make together. So I'm going to multiply the top line by 2, the bottom line by 3. This makes them equivalent, but not opposite. So one of these lines have to be negative, and the line that I'm going to choose to be negative is the bottom one. And now we're going to distribute these and rewrite the equations below this double line. So the top line is 2 by 3 x's, that's 6 x's, 2 by 4 y's, that's 8 y's, and 2 by 13, that's 26. The bottom line gives me negative 3 by 2, that's negative 6 x's, negative 3 by positive 5 y's, that's negative 15 y's. And finally, negative 3 by 4, that's negative 12. And here we go. So the 6 x's and negative 6 x's will cancel, there's a cancellation. That's what this does for us. And we can continue by just solving for the single variable now. 8y's take away 15y's. That's negative 7y's. 26 take away 12. And this is the part where I wanted positive. That gives me just 14. And this is a nice number to work with because 7 goes into 14 twice. Negative 7 goes into 14. Negative 2 times. So our y solution for this problem is negative 2. And to fully do this correctly, if you ever wanted to solve a system of equation independently, one term independent from the other, you do it this way, and you always get the right solution. Even if you do one of these incorrectly, it's better to get just one wrong and get partial credit instead of getting them both wrong because one of your solutions you input into the next, and that makes a big problem. However, for the sake of what I'm doing here to show that it actually works and is solid, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to solve this system by checking my solution into the original equation to see if my second solution is accurate. And in this way, when you're doing your test, you can check to see if you're actually right in your problem. This way, you don't have to wait for a professor to give you a test back to know you're doing it right. You can check your answer yourself, and it's called the check method. So let's see how that will work. So in the first case, we're going to solve for x. We're going to get our x solution and get the solution for y by plugging our x into one of the original equations. After we do that, we're going to solve for y, check if the y solution matches what we got when we checked our x solution, and then we're going to check our y solution and substitute it back in to see if we get the correct x that we had when we had our x solution. All right? So we're going to do a double check in this case. So let's start by solving for x. And this gives a lot of you guys a security blanket for making sure you're getting the right answers, right? I know a lot of people hate going home with that anxiety of maybe I failed this test. You know, I studied really hard. In this case, you could study real hard and make it benefit you, all right? So here we have the negative 3. And in the first case, we're solving for x, so we're canceling our y's. Something that's noteworthy is our signs are already opposite, so we don't have to change the symbols to make them opposites. All we have to do is make them the same number. And to make this number equivalent to this, well, from the last problem, we saw the LCM of 4 and 5 is 20. And so we're using the same multiples in this case. We're going to multiply the top line by 4, the bottom line by, actually, the top line by 5, and the bottom line by 4. Usually what we do is we swap the pair up here. So we're using 5 here and 4 down here. And when we do this multiplication, what we're going to get is 15x's plus 20y's equal... 35. The second line here is going to give us 8x's. This by this is negative 20y's. And this by this is negative 12. And now we just add the two lines. As we see, the y's again will cancel each other out. 15x's plus 8x's is 23x's. And this is equivalent to exactly 23x's. And so our solution for x, 23x's, is equivalent to 23. Divide by 23, and we get x is equivalent to 1. Now, I did mention that we will substitute our x solution into one of the original equations to see if we have the correct x uh, so we can get our y solution. So let's see how that would work for some of you advanced people. So what we do is we take one of the original equations, and we're going to swap the value of x into one of these original equations so we could get our value of y. And so... We'll take the top equation, 
three x's plus four y's are equivalent to seven. We'll substitute in our x, which is three times one plus four y's equals seven. This gives us three plus four y's equals seven. We subtract three. These threes go away. We have four y's are equivalent to four. And here we already see that 4y equals 4, we divide by 4, and we get y equals 1. So if x is 1, y is 1 if you substitute this incorrectly. Now I don't usually explain this to people because I don't like for students to cheat their way to a solution even though it's technically not cheating. I just believe in wholehearted work. If you're practicing doing both solutions, you should expect to see this solution when you solve for y. And the same solution for x when you substitute your y value into one of these original equations so you can get this x. So let's see what happens when we do that. We're going to now solve for y. And to solve for y again, we're taking the two original equations of 3x plus 4y's equals 7. And 2x's minus 5y's are equivalent to negative 3. And here we're going to multiply and augment each line here. And what we're using is the opposite numbers that are with the x's because we have to cancel the x's to solve for the y's, right? So we're using 2 up here. We're using 3 here. And since the values are not opposite of each other, we're going to multiply the bottom line by a negative so we could get these to be positive, right? And that's going to be a negative. These two will go like this. And we're going to distribute away. All right, so 2 by 3x's, that's 6x's. 2 by 4y's, that's 8y's. And 2 by 7, that's 14. Negative 3 by 2x's, that's negative 6x's. Negative 3 by negative 5y's, that's positive 15y's. And negative 3 by negative 3, that's positive 9. Now again, the two 6's here are opposite. 6 and negative 6, so the x's are going to cancel out. 8y's plus 15y's, that's 23y's. 14 plus 9, that's also 23. So we divide both sides by 23 to isolate our y term, and we get y is equivalent to 1. So guess what? Our solution when we plugged in the x for the y was actually accurate. But now let's check if our solution for our y produces the x value, because if this produces the same x value, then we know we got both solutions correct. Okay? So let's then plug into the first original equation, and we have 3x's plus 4y's equals 7. And for the record, it doesn't matter which equation I plug this into, it will work for each one the same, right? So here I have 3x's plus 4 times 1 is 7. Then 3x's plus 4 is 7. Subtract 4 to both sides. These go away. I have 3x's are equivalent to 3. And again, like the last problem, 3x is equal 3, divide by 3, and I get x is equivalent to 1. So my y value produced, the x equals 1, my x value produced, a x value of 1 produced, a y is 1. Substituting them kind of helps us get the same answer. But the only way to procure the correct solutions by default is substituting and solving for each independent variable. So make sure that if you're practicing for an exam, you can handle solving each one independently. And while you're at it, you can go ahead and use your check method to make sure that your solutions are correct. And once you build enough confidence, you don't have to do both of them. You can just choose one line of this work to get all your work done. Thank you.